You've probably heard about this, but marijuana has been on sale in Colorado for a few days now. What you may not know is it's also available in all sorts of candies, cakes, and pies. Here's CNN's Ana Cabrera. Hello, Ganja Gourmet. Forget about smoking a joint. Oh, we have all the edibles you can imagine. And we're not just talking pot brownies. This is a 70 milligram pumpkin pie. Today, the world of marijuana edibles is reaching new extremes. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different products. You are inside Denver's Ganja Gourmet. Once a medical marijuana restaurant, now a pot product supermarket of sorts, specializing in marijuana-infused candy, cookies, and crispy treats. <laughs> so if you have a sweet tooth, this is a good way to go. Yeah, this is definitely the best way to go. Plus coffee, can of butter, and... Chamomile tea. There's something here that's sure to make everyone happy. Want a protein-packed pot fix? Try the peanut butter. Gluten-free? No problem. Diabetic? How about a sugar-free sucker? But why edibles? And the reason why like, I choose edibles because I'm not really into like the whole smoking. Like, I'll do it every once in a while, but I guess part of issue is like, I cough a lot more. Easy on the lungs, odor-free. Some say it's also easier to control dosing. How do you know the dosage is what you say it is? We make our hash oil. That's the base of all of our products. If the hash oil tests out at this percentage of THC and this percentage of the other cannabinoids, then we can actually do the equations in the math to break down what we want. Sure Morgan Iverson is in the business of making marijuana edibles. Canyon Cultivation uses hash oil to create cannabis-infused hard candy, drops, breath strips, and olive oils. Is this your office, your kitchen? What do you call this place? So this is the lab. Iwersons is one of dozens of budding edible businesses that are part of the estimated $1.5 billion marijuana industry, which analysts say could quadruple in just a few years. We like our baklava here. <laughs> Love's Oven is busy baking up baklava, a top seller, netting $3,000 a month. Buttery goodness. <laughs> Here, it's all about the can of butter. Marijuana trimmings roasted in butter for up to 24 hours. The result, a high-potency THC product that is baked into each treat. How many different items do you guys make? Um, we have about 44 different products currently. In three years, Love's Oven's customer list has grown from three dispensaries to 40. And that's just for medical marijuana sales. What do you anticipate with the <laughs> recreational sale of marijuana? Chaos and craziness. Yet state and local regulators are working to keep things under control. While marijuana edibles aren't currently regulated by the FDA, Colorado marijuana-infused food producers will have to follow new rules in the new year. One of the new rules with marijuana edibles has to do with child-resistant packaging, meaning it has to come in an opaque package and it has to have a two-step process to opening it. Keeping people safe, especially children, is a high priority for this industry under scrutiny. The world is watching. We consider ourselves pioneers in the end of prohibition. As cannabis-focused kitchens take a bigger bite out of the marijuana market. Ana Cabrera, CNN, Denver. Happening now, Arctic blast. About 140 million Americans are bracing for a life-threatening cold tonight. 